Hey everyone, so I've just shot a 26 minute long video so I thought I'd better give an intro to let you know the different sections of this video. So it appears that in May Google is going to be rolling out the generative search and how is that going to affect us people who rely on Google for traffic? That's what we're going to be discussing in the first 10 minutes of this video. If it's happening how it's coming about, what the effects of that will be. And then in the next 15, 16 minutes, I'm gonna I go through the detailed, comprehensive strategies of how our company has come up with a way to deal with that situation. And um, it's pretty exciting, it's pretty comprehensive, so that's why it takes so long, but you'll get the detail by detail by detail strategy of how we are tackling this situation and if it doesn't arrive in May it's coming soon it was meant to arrive in December last year Google put it off so Google's got uh, their Google IO release in May so we are assuming that they are going to release it then but if it's not then it's going to be soon and I think you're going to really enjoy our response to Google generative search results and if you run an agency uh, your clients if this happens in May your clients are going to be screaming about lack of traffic if you are on our team you will be um, an exclusive agency with the ability to deal with the new generative engine that comes along and there are only going to be limited spots I'm not giving this out to everyone so you will be in an exclusive club before the rest of the world Okay guys, so we need to talk about this. In less than 50 days, everything changes. If you've been worried about organic traffic and driving traffic to your website, you're gonna wanna watch this. Eli Schwartz is an expert in this field. This is where I first heard about it on LinkedIn, but it's also been confirmed on new sites that Google is starting to roll out their AI search results in May. And if you haven't seen what it looks like, let me. So there's a big buzz going around that the search generative experience is gonna roll out in May this year. So that's less than two months. And then interesting, look at these comments. I hope everyone's building their email list. I just want search engines that filter out the products. It's gonna be pay to play. I may actually stop using Google over this. Before we start talking about the solution, which I've got here, and here I'll explain this uh, a bit deeper. Let's find out what people are actually saying. So if we go to Yahoo Tech, Google starts testing its AI overviews on the general public. Right, well we already know that there's been beta testers using SGE for um, a decent period of time now, but now they're leaking it out just to get feedback. Google confirms it has started a test with non-enrolled SGE users giving them access to its AI overviews in search. The company stated it's eager to collect feedback from the general public where it needs to improve its generative AI. By the way, we've got generative search already on Android phones. Here's an example of it. Here's a, a photo of some of the supplements I take and you'll see how the results appear. So I'm selecting this image here. And you will see, I'm, I clicked on lens, so it's found that image, and this is the generative result. So it's found these in its Google search. Boom, and you'll see top listing is eBay, then Instagram, then Amazon, then eBay, etc. So our goal is to get to the top of those generative results, of course. So Search Engine Land says, Google starts testing AI overviews from SGE in main Google search interface. Some users who do not opt in to Google Search Labs SGE feature may see AI overview answers in the search results. In May 2023, Google opened up Search Labs section for searches to opt in to see and use the Google SGE results. 
that contained AI overviews. Now the AI overviews as I understand it will be presented as it will be a generative result, an overview, and then it will be three uh, organic listings and then products. And then the typical organic search results below that. So that's the format as I understand it. And my goal is to get in those top three listings by telling the search engine to place our sites there. And I'm going to get onto that later in this video. So what searches will see Google will show AI overviews to a small amount of a small subset of US users Google is first starting with a set of queries where it thinks generative AI can be especially helpful these queries are often more complex and involve questions it may be helpful to get information from a range of web pages like how do I get marks off painted walls for these tests Google said it had has a high confidence in the quality and value of these queries that it brings to users in general. Google told us it would show AI overviews when it's truly additive and in the instances where people will get a better response than what they would see on a Google search today. So what that's inferring is they're going to offer generative results for different types of queries and we'll get into that a bit later. So some queries that will present direct organic results and what it thinks are terms that require the assistance of AI will provide AI generative responses first for those queries. So why now? Google told us they want to get feedback from searchers who have not opted into SGE specifically. This way they can get feedback and learn how a more general population will find this technology helpful, Google explained. Ads. Google will continue to show ads in and around these AI overview experiences. They can be an overview. Why we care. These AI answers may push down both organic and standard search ads. It may result in less or potentially more traffic to your site depending on where the citations are referenced and where Google places the ads. The likelihood is these experiences will likely drive less overall traffic to sites than what the current Google search results do. Time will tell. When Google launches this fully, but right now you no longer need to be in the SGE labs to see AI overviews. Google is testing it in the wild. And from what I've gathered, it's appearing full blown in May and what is it today it's the 2nd of April so you know we've got about a month or a month and a half before this is going to land so here's some demos from inside Google Labs from what the results actually look like what the new Google search experience looks like the interface the new Google search experience may display an AI generated answer above the search results Google clearly labels the answers at the answer as generative AI as experimental which is then followed by an answer to your query so this here is the generative response and it's popped up a couple of links to sites that thinks provides the best answer so our goal is to get in here when you click on the expand button to toggle you get this so Can I stop that? No, I can't. So the first result is ads generate generating the response, and these are the products. So this is the from the organic results in there. So conversations, you can follow up with your query by adding more details or additional prompts to ask a follow-up ask a follow-up box. Google will then generate a follow-up answer. So when I ask Google directly when is SGE coming out, it says sometime in 2024. Right now SGE is still in beta 
and only select and accessible only to select users who have signed up to test it but it will likely but it will likely roll out fully at some point in 2024 Google's goal with SGE is to provide users with more relevant recent and helpful information directly in search okay so in this recent article dated March 28 only uh, four days ago Google has not announced a launch date for SGE. It can go live at Google I.O. in May, but likely not on queries with ads. So Google's got a big uh, Google I.O. release on May 14. And that's, you know, if they're going to drop it, that's probably the place they're going to drop it. But again, Google's not told me on or off the record that SGE will ever go fully live, let alone that it would launch on a specific date. In fact, we had to squash some rumors about this before. Google did not once have a deadline. Google did once have a deadline of December, 2023. So they've pushed that back and it looks like May is looking pretty much on the cards from what I can tell. If Google does launch SGE in the near future, I think it will be launched in a way that does not disrupt their search ads. I think Google would launch AI overviews on search results that generally do not contain any ads. And that's an important point. Google is one of the largest companies in the history of mankind, and 65% of their revenue has directly come from advertising in search. Google is a massive, massive company and it was all built on the advertising revenue generated in organic search so they're really playing they found themselves in a real spot like perplexity.ai is a much better provides a much better service than google organic search does right now no doubt about it search queries that were 100 percent in google and it have moved over to AI no doubt about it a, a lot of uh, if you're searching for information AI is way better generally speaking but for local stuff Google is still is still the boss and the other thing that a lot of people don't really understand about Google is that Google owns half the internet anyway they own Apple well they don't own Apple but they pay Apple 30 billion a year to place their Google product inside the Apple environment. So if you want to search, you got Google. And they have deals like that with other platforms everywhere. So Google is not going away anytime soon. So if your income relies on Google, Google is not going anywhere. But we've got to up our game to make sure we get our content where Google is presenting it. Which we've got a couple of strategies to do that and one of them is our brute force geo software you know our history back in 2007 we created brute force seo it's now 2024 and we are releasing brute force geo which is generative engine optimization i'll get back to that in a sec so barry swartz says google sge overviews on by default for some US based test users is now live. Google told us it would happen and now I'm seeing complaints from users about it. Older story updated here, so let's check that out. AI overview turned itself on, I want it off. The AI overview on Chrome has seemingly turned itself on and I do not want it. I've scaled the internet and nobody has an actual fix outside using an ad block extension. For my Chrome settings, experimental AI is turned off and has not been turned on from Google Lab. From the Google Labs beaker, it's, it is still in the join now stage because I have never signed up for it. How to turn off AI searches. So, so there's already a little bit of controversy how to turn off AI searches. I'm a college student and don't want to use AI for anything at all. I don't want to risk being outed for plagiarism. Or misinformation found out this morning that AI overviews is somehow enabled I can't find anywhere how to turn it off I'm not a part of any Google AI programs I do not wish to participate for reference this is what it looks like so there's no real smooth sailing ahead for Google this is the biggest disruption to Google 
obviously in its history and it's going to be interesting to see how they deal with it over time. So if you look at the Google stock prices over the last five years, there's no indicators whatsoever that they've been um, interrupted by AI. But that will be a very interesting space to keep an eye on for sure. So we've been preparing for this for a long time. Obviously, as soon as AI um, hit the world, it was obvious that it was going, going to affect Google in a massive way. And why? The simple reason is Googlebot is dumb the best it can do to tell you if the quality of the content on a site is referenced by other trusted links which has been great for the last couple of decades but it's dumb <laughs> now with AI um, the building of that massive trust network has basically been deleted overnight because now we've got bots that can ping your site and it can rate the quality of it to within a tenth of a percent and rate it against all the others. That will happen as compute gets cheaper and it will just rank the quality of the sites based on how good they are, based on the content provided. Simple as that. But the beauty of that is, is that now we can speak directly to the AI without the AI even knowing it. And that's exactly what we're doing with this software here. So in this software, you add your OpenAI API key, create a profile or select, create a new profile or select an existing profile. In here, we are using the blogger network. Why? Because Google loves itself, as you know, and we can get in, get our blogger content into the AI as fast as possible. Okay, so buckle up. But this is what this software is here. I'm, I'm going to read out uh, what it is, what it, what we've designed. So, okay. The purpose of the software is to create extremely high quality content on any topic that will rank at the top of the new generative search engines and will also rank extremely highly in the normal, current, organic search engines. So that's really important. We, we are creating blogger blogs with high quality content that are going to look we already know bloggers rank really well because Google loves them it's got webmaster tools so we can get it in the index immediately they are extremely high DR blogs right out of the box so you start the software into the main name of the blog which is your main keyword phrase enter 20 keyword phrases you would like to rank for so where are we so you've got your main keyword phrase here, main keyword phrase, and that will be the title of the new blog and 20 keywords. 20 keywords, longer tail the better because your long tail keywords have got the short ones in there and they will rank for the shorter terms and the longer term. So each of the 20 keyword phrases we put in there will be a new internal page on that blogger blog. So keyword one, etc. Then you click on next. I'll come back to this in a sec. So we also have the ability to use your own prompt injections and I'll, I will have tutorials on this or select one from the three provided. That are all oh, there's four now. So I will talk about prompt injections a bit more, but that's where we're talking directly to the AI in a way that doesn't know it's been spoken to and this information is invisible to the public. So we are creating blogger blogs with information with content that will help it rank really high in the existing organic result results. But we've got code in there that when it's pinged by the AIs, it speaks directly to the AIs without them even knowing it and directs the AI what to do and that is obviously to rank it to tell it that this is the most authoritative content based on this term then uses AI to generate images and content for each of the 20 keyword phrases and I've been mastering the prompts to create the best content possible for each of the terms you supply it then creates one highly SEO optimized 
page for each of the 20 keyword phrases you've entered. Each of the 20 keyword phrases is stored in our databases. More on this later. The software stores all of the URLs of the posts created. So that goes into a database as well. Software goes to Google Webmaster Tools and submits this new blog for indexing and also submits its sitemap, including all of the 20 posts that have just been created. So that's to ensure that Google Index knows that this new content that's just been created is there, it's submitted to Webmaster Tools and sitemap. The sitemap is submitted, so we get an index fast. The software grabs the first URL and goes to ChatGPT and says, please review this site URL, which is an expert on topic keyword phrase and goes through the 20 URLs. So we are pinging, basically we're just pinging ChatGPT AI and letting it know that this new site is aware and that is definitely being stored somewhere. Then we do the same with Google's Gemini AI and the same with Microsoft Copilot and we do the same. So we're pinging all the AIs with this new content and in the engine itself telling it that it's high quality content. So we're, that's kind of like um, a human prompt injection or we're replicating a human prompt injection by we're telling that AI, yeah, this is the best content about this topic. And for those of you wanting to see how simple it is to uh, do prompt injection and trick uh, AI into saying exactly what you want, here's a, an example here. Oh, this, this is just a page I've done some prompt injection on and hit there and here let's see what ChatGPT says about this URL boom hey guys did Pete hack this if you're curious about the details and there is the link very very cool that's how simple it is by adding a bit of uh, prompt injection to a web page to get the AI to react in a way that you would like it to do. In this instance, I wanted it to print, hey guys, did Pete hack this? Very, very simple. And that's one of about 10 different ways that we know how to do it at this stage. Then the software goes to Reddit and posts each of the 20 blog post URLs as individual posts on the Reddit platform. Now, why are we doing that to Reddit? Because, oh, I can't remember, is it OpenAI or, one of the top uh, AI companies is paying Reddit, oh, I can't remember, 60 million a year for access to that live uh, content. You know how uh, Twitter, Twitter's Grok AI is, is, works amazingly well because it's got access to the Twitter database while well, the other AIs are doing deals with Reddit to license their live content. So. That means all the new posts are getting pinged by those AIs. And so we're pinging Reddit ourselves with our content, with the blogs you've just created to ensure those blog posts and the references about those links get into those AIs immediately. Once it's completed, the software will do exactly the same with Tumblr because that is where the live user data is and other AIs are licensing that live content. So we're pinging Tumblr with the links to the blogger blogs just created with a message saying how amazing this content is. So the AI that reads it sees that this content, this link is in their database as well. So the main reason we're doing this is to provide the licensed AIs access to our content that we've just created on the blogger platform. But at the same time, we're getting very powerful links from Reddit and Tumblr back to the posts created on the blogger blog. So can you imagine how powerful these blogger blogs are gonna be just in natural organic search? So there's no way you can lose with this software. Ideally, we're gonna be creating amazing content on the blogger platform that will rank extremely well in Google. We've proven that before without these links that we're doing now. Um, and using our prompt injection techniques, that was the whole goal for this software to get to get into the generative experience 
but at the same time we're going to be killing it in organic. So let's talk about search engine. Okay, so I think I've pretty much covered that. So that's where your article content goes and you select one of the prompts. What have we got here? Prompt one, prompt two. I haven't populated this yet, but obviously that will be done. And then you click on next and the software will go off and do exactly what I've said. So that's one of our responses to AI hitting the search engine space. We've been designing this for a very long time and it's getting close to public release. Will it be ready for mate? Hopefully. Um, we'll see. And I've got another answer to the problem of Google going away in terms of searches being directly impacted by AI. And more on that later. We've got a for people who are relying on the traffic from Google, we've got this product and we've got another product coming in the pipeline. So I highly encourage you to go over to bruteforcegeo.com, enter your name and email address so you'll be kept up to speed on what we're doing with this amazing software. This one you'll be notified straight away. And oh, I didn't get back to you on the links and the keywords in the database. So we're going to be using lots of you have the ability to write your own prompt injection in that will be put in every of those blog posts or you can use our prompts here and in the background we've got um, I told you that all the keyword phrases are stored in, the, in a database so in the background um, this is why we can do this at scale um, why we can do live testing at scale because if we've got 500 people using this and testing different prompts that get prompt injections that get into the generative search we are tracking that by in the background this software is pinging google keyword phrase looking for a blog or blog and every one that it finds it updates our database with a successful result and sends it to our team here and then we can find out which um, which prompt injection is working the best to get into the top of the generative results. And then once we find that, we update the software and update the prompts accordingly. So it's important you leave the software running in the background. And it's once every 30 minutes, it's just going out to Google and pinging the generative search, looking for a blogger blog and then any that it captures store updates our database and then we know which ones are working so together as a group working on this we will be at the leading edge of optimizing for generative search of anyone else on the planet and we will be way before anyone else and um, so I highly encourage you if you'd like to be a part of that team go to brutforcegeo.com, enter your name and your email address and I'll keep you up to speed with the um, availability of the software when it becomes available and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.